the viewing audience gets a peek into our conversation. We get comfy. Yeah. <laughs> get relax. Thanks for the, the uh, hospitality. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful home. Thank you. This is a beautiful space. <laughs> Yeah, is, uh, it's all um, right. It's big enough to look like it's a couple of stories. But it's not. Right. It's just one ranch. Wow. It's yeah. really wide. It's beautiful. Next, Well, the last place that I brought everyone to had three or four floors. Everyone complained. Every time I tried to shoot in there, really, yeah. going up and down these stairs. So, kept it simple. How often are you in Miami? Every month. <laughs> Every month. I mean... The past couple months, I took a little break. All my work kind of shifted to like LA and Vegas. So I wasn't here, but I missed it. So now I'm just like bringing everything to Miami right now. Got you. Yeah. So you have a couple of people here that you've mm -hmm. introduced me to? Yes. You want me to introduce? Please the let audience? us know who's, who's all here. So um, we got Hectech, who's my partner, and he's my videographer. Selena Blaze, who's setting off alarms. Okay. <laughs> Bye. We, we protected. <laughs> she does content and por mainstream porn, actually, also. Mm -hmm. Dante Diggs, he's a content creator. Um, I think he might go mainstream if he wants to, you know. Zaquil, my documentary person, he's not here right now. Um, my hairstylist and my twin brother, Quinn. Who else is here? Oh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, who um, is the head of BNWO in Miami. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So Family. how do you know all these people? Um, <laughs> from behind the scene business adventures and in front of the camera business adventures. So I know it's the button. everything was to make noise now. Right. The dryer, the washer machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a working house. Yes, it's a working house. So um, I know Dante from content creation. Um, Hectech, of course, because he's a videographer. Um, Selena from porn, you know, so these are relationships I've built over the years. I think the newest one would be Pharaoh, who I met through some lifestyle endeavors and things like that. And, you know, yeah. some behind the scene business that we're going to do. So. So where are you from, Gogo? -Go? New York, Brooklyn. <laughs> and tell Best me about side. growing up in Brooklyn. Um, streets, man. I was outside. Um, it's hard. I mean, it's New York, so if you can't make it in New York, you know, or if you can't make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So, I mean, cold, 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 yeah, cold winters, cold warm summers, cold winters, hot, stinky summers, yeah. But no, New York taught me how to hustle, taught yeah. me how to trap, you know, taught me how to work really hard and how to maneuver in a fast pace. So, what was the relationship like with your parents? Um, I don't have any. They're dead. So <laughs> I'm sorry. So, to hear that. I was in uh, the system. I was in foster care system. Then family members, you know, took me in. So I do have a foster mom who's actually related to me, but she's 85 right now. So she doesn't quite understand what porn is. So I never really had that. I mean, she knows I'm in adult entertainment, but we don't go through the details. You know, I never really had that hard rejection mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying or that that pull back from my family I have eight brothers and I thought they would be the ones to kind of like fuck are you doing but um no they supported me you know I hit it for a while and they supported me and you know let me know like we you know what the fuck you've been doing you know right. and protected me and just you know they think it's awesome they get bitches you know, like they get, you know, they get bitch. They always think that they bring in somebody to me. Oh, they want to start only fans, you know, and that's their way in. That's their line now. Like, right. you know, who my sister is. So, I don't, you know, I don't have any other problems. <laughs> the it's benefits, crazy. right? The benefits of it. Yeah. So talk to me about uh, not having parents. What age did you? Uh... Five. So I don't remember my mother. So it wasn't like um, a loss. I guess at the time it would have been, it would have probably felt like a loss, but I don't remember that, you know, so I was so young. Um, but it definitely, with my kid, you know, it, it's that constant, you know, I got to be there, right? So that's why I love the business I'm in, because one, I'm the boss, you know, now I'm the boss. 
And I put myself in that position when I had my son because I didn't want to work for someone else. I don't want to ask permission if he's sick or if he has a karate match or you get what I'm saying? So that, that freedom to be a stay at home mom and only travel when I want to and take the jobs that I want because they're so high paying that I don't have to work every day, but I do, I work from home every day. That is like an urgency or this, this need to have to be home with them because I know what it's like to go through life without that comfort. So I'm just like, he never should have to not have comfort or me, you know? What kind of kid were you? Um, independent, pretty independent, you know? My brothers are all older than me besides my twin brother. And I was like their mother, you know? Like I raised them, I cooked for them, I cleaned for them, I did everything for them. And they always were there for me. So it was like I had, like eight fathers, like it was, you know, so I was a very independent, serious kid. I never was really the fun kid. My twin's the fun one, so. So you graduated high school in Brooklyn? Yeah, and I went to college in Philadelphia. So a lot of people, if you look up my bio, a lot of places will say that I'm from Philly. But when I started dancing, it was to go through college in Philly, so I became a name in Philly. And when I did porn, I was still going to school in Philly. So everyone thought that I was from Philly. So everyone, and most of my connections do come from Philly, but no, I'm from New York originally. But you know, I let them both rep, you know? I love Philly, yeah, that's I was gonna say, second one? home. You know? But you rep Brooklyn then. I rep Brooklyn, yep, yeah. don't get twisted. Brooklyn, Puerto Rican, so. Brooklyn and, so you're black and Puerto Rican. Yeah, I'm Jamaican and Puerto Rican. Wow. Yep. And, but it's different. You got to say from Brooklyn, though, because we're different when you're from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> so what age were you first introduced to sex? At what age? Mm -hmm. um, I graduated high school. You know, I didn't start. Yeah, it baffles me when people are like introduced so young to sex. I'm like, the fuck? I had a Kenya doll at that age. Like, <laughs> um, no, like when I got into sex work or had sex or when I realized what sex was. When you realized what sex was? Oh. Um, I was young. I think, okay, if we're talking about that, I was pretty young, but that's only because my mother was um, a sex worker and her mother was like a sex worker. So I think before I realized exactly what it was, I was introduced to it unknowingly, you know, just having different men in and out of the house with my grandmother who raised me for a little bit before I was taken from her. So I think that, um, you know, I eventually caught on, you know, she's pushing pussy, you know, like, <laughs> you know, whether, and, and I don't want to say like, I saw cash transactions, but we kind of know, you get what I'm saying? She was a nightlife woman. So, it was like, I guess at that age, you know, but that also pushed me to wait. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, it gave me a healthy, almost fear of sex and men. You get what I'm saying? So I wasn't introduced to actual sex until I graduated high school. But I, I knew what was happening growing up, you know, but no one ever really exposed that to me and anytime it came kind of like close I kind of like shied away from it just because I grew up in this home with a lot of men in and out and and I saw the drama too I had a healthy kind of like fear of sex right so it never really for a long time I thought it was something like this is impossible how do people do this you know and then hormones hit kind of late but hormones hit and I was <laughs> the first years I started late but I made up for it so <laughs> copy that so you dance you decided to dance to put yourself to school mm -hmm. and how long did you uh, end up dancing for um I still dance no <laughs> I get booked to dance now but I was a dancer just regular dancer like going into the club paying my fee mm -hmm. hustling it out um I probably did that for you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, So like four, four years before I started doing porn, but I was still stripping 
after that until about I was still hustling it out probably right when I had my kid he's seven probably like to like six years ago you know five six years ago I was still kind of trapping it out you know until I kind of I'm 30 30 30 now yep so what was the transition like going from dancing or stripping to porn and why did you make that transition um it was it was i don't know um i know why i got into porn but there wasn't a transition for me it wasn't like i did a couple of things and then i did a little more mm -hmm. it literally was a one day i woke up emailed that this is before like connect pal only fans like all that shit right i literally got up one day kind of like being rebellious against someone I dated I was engaged to at the time and he said I said you know you like porn like could I do porn like you think he was like no so when we broke up I, I was being rebellious so I swear to you I went online and the big company at the time for black girls was West Coast Productions I don't know if they're still around or not or what they doing but it was West Coast Productions I literally emailed them like some random, like there was a button at the time on the website, like become a model or money opportunities. And I just emailed them. And the next day I got an email back and was like, you know, send pictures, verify, you know, want to see what I look like. Then someone called me that day and said, yeah, we're going to fly you out in like a couple days. And just with the money in my pocket, like I went out that following week to L.A., and it could have been a complete scam. It could have been a creep. It could have been a scam. It was like, like on a way, I was fucking so stupid back then. I was so reckless back then. <laughs> but I went out to LA for the first time ever in my life. Never been to LA. To some uh, people, you sound ambitious, by the way. Get well, sh I, hindsight, like, don't do it. Like, don't just email a random person. <laughs> you know, and I'll fly you out, right? It could have been a scam. It could have been anybody, right? So I fly out, and I stayed at like a Super 8 you know like some cheap shit and um in the following day when i got there you know some guy picked me up and took me to terry burton who was a director at the time and he just like you know hair makeup you know he was like you know today like we're gonna shoot a porn matter of fact no they took me to get tested and then the following day, because you know, the results come right back. I didn't know anything about like this talent testing. I'm like, I got a regular test. They're like, no, right? So um, it came right back. And then he was like, hair, makeup, like 7 o'clock in the morning, like just all this. And I just looked up, and I was like this glamorous porn star. And then he drives me two hours into the hills to this huge mansion. Never been in one of those before, right? And I remember, you know, the one person I can remember in porn, there's two people I remember in porn, male-wise, uh, Wesley Pipes and Nat Turner. Like, those are the two, like, I would recognize, mm -hmm. right? And I remember thinking, because Nat Turner has that, like, gun tattoo on his hip, because he make jokes about him, like, Def County Jam and shit. So I'm thinking, like, you know what would be really awesome? If I fucking, like, my first scene was, like, with Nat Turner, right? Who the fuck pulls up? Nat Turner. Nat fucking Turner. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, this is real. This is this is fucked up, right? I'm like, I'm about to fuck Nat Turner. And um, so then I got a little nervous, like with the acting part. They just wanted me to walk around, look sexy. No clue how to do that on camera. Whatever. But as soon as I got butt naked and sex started to happen, no fear. No fear, no nervousness. Um, the camera, the light, I didn't care. It was just like, you know, and Terry said, you never done porn? I'm like, no, you know? I just kinda heard ding, ding, ding go off in my head. And I'm like, he's gonna fuck the shit out of me. I gotta fuck the shit out of him. So me and him, every time we do a scene together now, from our very first scene, we just like, it's like a wrestling match almost. You know? Mm -hmm. like. Like, I'm going to get you back for last time. You know, he's like, that was your first scene? Yeah, that was, no one believed that was my first scene. So then I stayed in L.A. longer, and Terry Burton was like, we got... That's my twin. <laughs> Bye. Leave it cracked so it doesn't say anything else. Like, oh, he was waiting to get out, too. 
Leave it cracked. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, that's Pharaoh. Yeah. What's up, Pharaoh? So, um, so yeah, it's no one believes that was my first scene, but he kept me out there and he hooked me up with more scenes and more scenes and. That's how I broke my very wow. first porn experience was not content creation. It was mainstream black porn. So what's going on with mainstream black porn nowadays? Um, I don't know. I got an agent. <laughs> I'm to the point now where I'm kind of like. Have you been getting calls? Yeah, I came back mainstream a year ago. And um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Every week, every month, like yeah, every month. every other week, I'm somewhere shooting mainstream. Unless I tell them, please don't book me these next couple weeks. Yeah. And uh, who shoots in uh, in Miami? Brazzers, Reality Kings, Bang Bros, all of Mind Geek, the umbrella company of Mind Geek. You know, uh, so many companies. I mean. Ones that I probably don't even know of. There's a lot of companies now that I don't know until I'm booked and I'm like, who the fuck are they? You know, and they're big, you know, big interracial. I'm doing a lot of interracial, um, not by my choice, but I don't care. You know? That's a demand? Yeah, that's huge. Has it always been that way? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, um, like I'm in porn, but I don't follow like porn trend, you know, I ever since I bought my company and, and did everything, I just worry about I just have a thing. You don't shoot what you think will make you money. You shoot what you want to and figure out how that can make you money. So I don't really follow porn trend. I just want to shoot what I like. So I don't really keep up on like what's hot or you know, whatnot. I do know that interracial probably always has been a big thing, right? Usually for black guys, big dick black guys fucking white girls. Has it been that way for big booty black girls fucking little white boys? I don't know, but that's what's happening right, right. now. How serious do you take content creating? That's all I do. My, I don't have any other job or anything else that I do. I have a porn company and we make pro-am you know we're that in between so i'm not um i'm not brazzers but i'm not an amateur by any means i'm pretty much this close to actually brazzers but um as far as quality and content and things like that um it's everything you know the industry is like near and dear to me i've, I've seen it kill my mom you know i've seen it destroy friends of mine so I think um, as far as the black side of things. So if you ever hear my talks or anything like that, like, you know, on social and stuff like that, um, I'm really big into the activism side and into black on black. I'm very pro-black. So, you know, it's everything to me. And the purpose of the activism is? For sex worker rights. Sex work is work, number one, for protections, number two. And also to kind of gatekeep this industry because of content creation anybody can pretty much be in porn anybody if they're if they become big enough in content creation can fuck a porn star who's in mainstream you know i'm a porn star that's in mainstream and every guy i have in here is a content creator they're not mainstream you know so i think um if we don't gatekeep there's a lot of tourists i call them they come in they fuck up the industry. They they fake their tests. You get what I'm saying? They um, don't have proper etiquette. They treat the girls horribly. Some of them are even predators. Some of them are just straight up users, you know? And they give this bad, bad stigma, right? Or they leave a, a trail of trauma, right? To the women, to the men of this industry. And then they leave because this isn't their life, right? They're not a sex worker. This is a hobby for them. This is a curiosity for them. So for me, I believe those type of people that are actually having sex with porn stars and content creators who are doing this for survival and for living, 
I think we need to really vet them, vet them out. So how do you draw the line in the sand, so to speak? What do you mean? Well, filtering them and, and making sure that... That they're actual know, content creators? Well, sex workers, right? Mm -hmm. um, is what the broader term would be. Yeah. So, I mean, organize, right? And, and, and in any type of revolution, there must be some organization. Yes. And then you should be recognized by that mm -hmm. um, involvement. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there for activism. Maybe togetherness is needed first. Absolutely. So that's the number one trick, right? So especially with me being pro-black, and and I'm always going to speak on the black side of things, right? Um, is getting them all on deck, is one of my friends will say, all on deck. Um, but also, someone like me, who has a lot of respect from people in and out of the industry, right? Being open, lending myself to them. For example, I can't tell you how many people will shoot with someone that they saw that I shot with, and they said, well, I wanted to ask you for a reference, or I wanted, you know, and, and they didn't come to me first. You get what I'm saying? Why, or, why don't you think they um, Because I'm just this, like, in the, well, to their defense, I have not been accessible for years, you know? Um, and why is that? I'm just not, it's not a lifestyle for me, you know? Some people are porn stars 24 seven. They're on all the time. For me, like when I'm not go-go, I'm not go-go. And I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to see it, you know, it's, I had to separate that. And I also had a hard time adjusting when I became go-go. I, I left for a year, I come back home, and before I left, no one knew who I was. I come back home, everyone, I, I need security to get through the fucking grocery store parking lot, you know? So I retreated. I didn't know. It was scary. It's still fucking scary. You know what I'm saying? It's right. still scary. So especially now I got a kid. It's fucking terrifying. Um, Going back to togetherness and you said someone could have reached out. Yeah. So people that I, I want people to know that, you know, I'm not some God in the clouds. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, I don't mind the shock value when I do pop up, but reach out. I respond. You know, I, it may take me a minute. But, you know, do your due diligence first. Um, I do respond. What's the best way to reach you? Um, email, Twitter, uh, a friend of a friend. Like, you know, I, any way, any way that you can. I guess the best way would be Master, through my... Bedroom, sliding door. <laughs> I guess the best way would be my email, right? Right. When did you uh, start your company? Um, 2000 and... 16. Do you have partners? Um, I did. My wife of six and a half years, she was my partner. Um, she passed away last April. Um, she was my videographer. She was my partner in everything. We built this from the ground up right after I had my kid and she had her kid. Um, now, High Tech is my partner. So High Tech Desires, High Tech. Yeah, so now he's my my partner. He was sent to me. He's amazing just as a person, you yeah. know. He came to me when I was at a really, I just stopped everything at a really hard time. And it just, his work blew me away. And the fact that he was like on the same page as me as far as business, you know, he could have turned me down, you know. I'm like, listen. Was High Tech originally a creative when you guys High Tech? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was doing his own thing, you know, and he still does his own thing. But I feel like he does a lot for me. Like, he puts shit on pause or even when he's tired or whatever, man, like, because he has faith in me. I think he's the first person other than my wife that with my company, with my vision, with what I want to do, he actually has faith. I can say the craziest thing right now and he'll be like, Bet. <laughs> He's going to fucking do it, you know? How should fans approach you in public? Don't. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. Um, respectfully, if I'm with my kid, don't. Don't. Don't do it, you right. know? Um, 
if I'm going to my car by myself, night or day, don't run up on me when I'm about to get in my car. That for any woman is fucking terrifying, okay? <laughs> I think they just gotta pick their moments, you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I'm at dinner, like just pick your fucking moments, you know? I can't even explain it and I'm such a, I do a goofy thing now, like if I'm out and someone approaches me and they're like, are you go-go? I just take off running. <laughs> I come back, but I'm just, you know, they're like, my bad, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm joking. Like, it, I don't know, it's still. What's one question you get asked all the time? How can I get into porn? <laughs> That's the biggest question yeah. that people ask me. What's your answer? I have a class now, so you know, sign up for my class. <laughs> Do you have a class? Yeah. Where? <laughs> Online, on Patreon. Nice. The Content Creator 101. I'm still being reviewed now, you know, just to make sure my shit is correct, but I am opening myself up to mentoring and things like that now and teaching people the game and keys and affordable it's affordable tech they want me to charge way more what's the uh, in your opinion what's the what's the best route um to gain digital clout digital clout yeah let your work speak for itself you know be professional um networking meaning collabing with other people that do collab putting out, um, good, man, we could go into this for real, for real. You gotta identify your audience, you know? Who, who is your audience? And then, you know, network and care to people in that, right? And I think that, because um, I deal with a lot of men more so in the industry, I don't really do a lot of girl on girl. So, for example, I tell men, right? You always network with girls and retweet girls, but you do know that gay men, are your audience. They're the ones buying, right? They're the ones watching you and following you. You know, these guys don't go to a girl's page. Even if she retweets you, they don't go to your page and be like, it's a good looking man. Let me follow and subscribe. No, they're looking for other women, you know? So identify who your audience is, right? And collab and network and promo with people who are doing similar to you because you guys will have the same audience, you know? and um, do good work, quality work and let that speak for itself, you know? Whether you're gimmicky or not, right? And it's just complete engagement and also marketing. I mean, just, it's 90% marketing. Don't be afraid to put money behind your promotion, money behind your marketing. That you have to, Mar the right marketing will make the wrong person at the wrong time, the right person at the right time. What's the biggest misconception about your job? The biggest misconception about being a content creator, porn star, whatever, that I'm doing this all the time, that I'm just hoeing all the time, you know? I mean, I did, when I first came out in my career, mm -hmm. I did a slew of workout videos like, I don't know why, like, these people wanted me to, like, be working out and then sex happen. So even to this day, if I go to a gym and people recognize me, they'll wait. They think that a porn is about to happen. They'll think that I go to the gym to have sex. They In real life. That guy. <laughs> you, or they're going to see something. Because it could be a girl thing, too. Like, oh, she brought a girl. This is about to go down, you know? And it's like, no, no, not at all, you know? Not at all. How does this type of work affect you, like emotionally? Anxiety. No, um, it used to, it used to affect me way worse. I gave a lot, we give a lot of ourselves. There's nothing that we have that's for us. There's nothing that I have that's just for me. So I had to learn and have learned how to separate, right? Um, it's okay to say no. I've had to learn the power of no, no picture right now, no video right now, no, you can't have my number, no, don't approach me right now. I'm allowed, 
privacy before I thought that I had to allow everyone to get that picture, to get my presence, to get my time, to get my image, um, to meet me, you know? And that just makes you wanna not leave your home, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah, nothing could prepare you for that. How does GoGo define success? Success is doing what brings you joy and getting the outcome you wanted from it and being able to put those around you into that same place in their life. That's success to me. You know, I can climb this ladder all I want to. I can make me a boss. But I don't think you're really a boss unless the people that are around me can be a boss just just from being around me, right. you know, that they feel that they were in the presence of excellence and when they leave, that they're more excellent. That's my success. If you were to host a dinner and you have to Fun invite question. five people. Five people. Who would you invite? They can be uh, from the past to the present and they can be dead or alive. Five people? Five. Hectech is one. Jesus is two. Muhammad is three. Got two more spots. Um, hmm. I'm th look, I'm looking back, I'm looking past you, I'm thinking. Um, I said Hectic, Jesus, Muhammad, and then two more, two more, two more, two more. Um, Regina King. Regina King. And one more, one more. Um... Hmm, this has to be a good one. The last one has to be a good one. I think so. The last one has to be a good one. Um, my wife. Are you my still married? Wife. She's passed. So my late wife. Yeah, there'll be five. Four places you'd like to visit that you haven't been already. Four places I'd like to visit. Um, Japan, um, fuck, Nigeria, you said four, Japan, Nigeria, um, Japan, Nigeria, there ain't too many places I ain't been, Russia, Cuba. Yeah. I think the uh, question on everyone's mind right now. What? Why Russia? I just want to see what the fuck is happening over there. You know, I From mean. Their perspective. Um, just how, just feel how that is. You know, how they live over there. Um, I like to party with people. <laughs> I like to, no, I like to really get, you know, the vibe out of people. So it's just such a place that we're, you want to go somewhere that we're not allowed to go to. You get what I'm saying? You know, a place that people are like, you know, you really shouldn't go there, right? I want to know. I want to know what's so scary about it. I want to know what's up with it, you know? You'd be really surprised, like, how it's like, really? This is, this is what it is? And I get it, like, not Russia, like, right now. Motherfuckers is tripping right now, but you know, when they ain't tripping, you know what I mean? When they ain't bugging mm -hmm. and fucking other nations up, <laughs> I'll go. Cause I like vodka. Now I wanna see how they get down. Uh, <laughs> and the white boys over there built like fucking Mandingo warriors. They're fucking tall. They're fucking broad. What? What? I have one. I had one. I had one in college. 
I don't know where the fuck he's at. Fuck my whole life up. They're not circumcised though. But yo, <laughs> banging. Thought it was black. If he wasn't so pasty, he had one. I want to see where they make them at. How do you choose who to work with? I try them. Um, I'm the queen of the amateurs. So I love a new person. If, but if I see that you're working, that you're serious about content, like you're really, you just need that edge up, I'll be, yo, I'll, I'm the one that'll take the chance on that edge up, but I decide um, reputation. Can't be out here beating on bitches, or I, I've been cussing, right? So I can say I'm okay. <laughs> Can't be out here beating on bitches, getting fucked up, talking shit, you know? So of course, reputation, but the, the first thing that's gonna attract me is their look. I like a person with a character. You know, so everyone, you know, like, oh, Go-Go hangs with a diverse, strange, weird um, looking people, right? Like dramatic looking people. Uh, yeah, I like them to look like characters, especially if they have a personality that goes along with it because that translate very well on camera, you know, other than just the regular smuggler average dude that could look like anybody, you know? I want them to have a million tattoos and look like they did 25 years in prison, you know? Or I want them to look emo or goth and, and all those things, you know, and, and of course, you know, black. What do you think you brought from the mainstream porn to the content creating porn? Um, quality, quality and protocol. Um, some of these content creators will never know what it's like to be on a mainstream set, but when they work with me, they get a taste of that on how professional things can be. You know, you don't have to be fucked up on set. You, you know, the paperwork, you know, all of it, the protocol, hair, makeup, outfits, uh, 4K, 5K, I mean, all the quality, right? You know, it's even, you know, you take pride in it, you know, you, you care about quality. I care about quality. I want you think that you're watching a mainstream film. And these are just simply content creators, you know, even, you know, down to my home or the location or um, all of it. And it looks simple. Like we may not have like the boom tech and all this other shit, but you know, we're black folks. We make amazing, thing ha amazing things happen with minimal, you know, and then mix it with the talent that we naturally have we talking about like we do our shit's just as good so so how long before amateur content takes over mainstream content amateur content sells on its own so some people never want to transition into you know mainstream or do you, are you asking is it going to take over and fuck us up like mainstream shit yeah, is it going to catch up, or what, what's the trend with, uh, with them both in comparison? Um, mainstream, I think, is making a comeback. Um, more, they're letting more new people in, right? Like, I came back, you know, that's great. But there's these new girls that are also social media stars. You get what I'm saying? So it's like we're helping each other, right? So they're getting money. They're getting mainstream exposure. They're being coined porn stars now, like mainstream porn stars. But also, these are like already social media people that have a following. So it's like, oh, shit. So now they're bringing people that were following them, just regular life, right, to mainstreams, mainstream regular life into you know new viewers in so it mainstream is really making a comeback but there are people that want to stay amateur because that shit fucking sells too that crappy ass cell phone fucking footage you know fans like to feel like they're seeing something that they shouldn't you know that something authentic right authenticity is what is missing in mainstream well the amateur category and on any site has always been very popular. Yeah, so it's there. They're like neck and neck. Three tips for the next generation of content creators. Specifically porn. Porn? Mainstream or, oh, well, content creators, okay. Adult content creators. Um, three tips? Yeah. Say no when you think you should say no, because not all money is good money, right? Not all work is good work. Um, be you, do whatever it is 
that you want to do, right? Don't do it for the money. No, do it for the money. Don't do it if you're not getting money. But <laughs> don't do what you think is solely going to make you money and start doing things you don't want to do. Um, but don't worry about what people have to say about what you're doing, right? So be you. Do, do it all. Do everything you want to do. Um, you know, because scared money don't make money. And um, protect yourself. Testing, security, paperwork, um, even each other, protection, right? Protecting that person. If they don't know what you know, share it with them. You know, you'd want them to share it with you, right? So protection is key on all physically and business-wise and mentally, right? Spiritually, all that. Protection is key. Protect yourself, protect each other. If you had to say one word for the rest of your life, what word would you choose to say? One phrase or one word? Word. One word. For the rest of my life, I can only say that word. No. Thank you so much for taking the time and space to sit with me today. I no, I changed my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my answer. Um, hug. Hug. That would be the word. Why hug? hug? Why'd you change your answer? Because if I could only say one thing to my kid for the rest of my life, I wouldn't want it to be no. You know, do you love me, mommy? No. But I think that if I say hug, right, at least he'll always feel love and comfort, right? No matter what he said. Can I have a juice? Hug. <laughs> like, yeah. Much love, Gogo. Thank you again. Thank you. It was easy. <laughs> and nice. And nice. <laughs> Hey everyone, join Nightlight Interviews every Wednesday on Twitter Spaces from 10 to midnight.